Going. Okay, here we are over at Grossmont High School, and I want to show you guys how the bench top rake lathe works over here at our shop. Similar to the way it works over at Monta Vista, we are going to use that double chuck, which is located right down here. We're going to use that to mount our rotor. So this mounts upside down, like that so, and I just have to tighten the chuck up, arrow pointing up. Oh, yours came with an arrow. That's nice. And we just got to expand the jaws out and make this really snug. It doesn't have to be super tight, but it does need to be very snug on here. And then once we get this onto the double chuck, now we have to mount it onto the shaft on the machine. So the first thing I want to do right here is to move this back. I like to turn the lights on. I can see what I'm doing. Move the head unit back out of the way so I can mount the rotor onto the shaft. There are several different uh, adapters that we're going to use. I want to pick the largest cone, similar to the other machine. We want to get the largest one that fits inside. That's too big. It's our medium size one, still too big. So I'm going to use the small one over here. And that fits right inside there. So this is going to go on the machine first. So Wrong. there's a wide variety of chucks. You just have to find the one that fits into the back of the hat on the rotor. That's going to go ahead and go on first. Then we can take the rotor that's already mounted onto the double chuck, slide that on. And then it's just a matter of filling up the shaft and then tightening the wing nut. I mean, the nut on the end. It's not a wing nut. It's just a nut. And so here's the tightening nut. And it does have a, uh, the threads are mostly on this side than on this side. So if you need to slip it on pretty far like we do here, I don't know if this should fit on there. There we go. And then it doesn't have to be super tight. You just lean into it a little bit and that's it. That's tight enough. So before I get started, I want to put a silencing band on here. Uh, I want to absorb any potential vibrations, and that's what this rubber band is going to do for me. Use this one. If there's too much background noise, let me know. That just stretches over. That's going to absorb the vibrations that are created while we're cutting. Okay, once I get the silencing band on, the next thing I want to do is I want to center up the cutting head around the rotor. And so the machine comes with the tools that we use on this. I'm going to go ahead and loosen this up. And then we can slide the head unit back and forth as necessary. I'm going to bring it right in so I can get it nice and centered up on here. And you can tap that around to get it centered. When you go to tighten things on here, it's just snug. Nothing has to be super tight on here. Just a little, lean your weight into a little bit and that's good enough. We can go ahead and start the machine up now. On the button, get it rotating. So very similar to the other machine, I'm gonna bring the cutting tips into the surface, adjust them so they're just barely touching for a little scratch coat. A little scratch mark, I should say, not a scratch coat. <laughs> lock this down and then we're going to go ahead same thing on this side just get it to barely touch we don't want to dig it in on here because the idea is to take off the very least amount that's necessary so we just get it touched and locked down and now we're going to this machine starts in the center and works its way out i'm going to run this in manually all the way and if you guys see there's a little rust ring on the inner edge right here i want to make sure i take that off Same thing on the other side. There's a little rusty edge on there. I want to make sure I take that off. We're going to zero out our scale. We want to measure how much we're actually taking off here. You don't want to cut more than 10 thousandths at a time. It'll dull the tips. So I usually cut six thousandths. Again, the idea here is to take off the least amount of material necessary to clean up the surface of the rotor. Make sure you lock these black knobs down so it doesn't come out of adjustment. And then this cuts at two different speeds. One is a fast cut, so if you have a lot of grooves in there, you need to clean the surface up, we can do that. But this one's really not too bad. So we're gonna do what we call a finish cut or a slow cut. 
So here's the speed right here. And here for a one cut pass, we want somewhere between one and three. Two is good. We're all set up over here, and all we have to do is shift this to disc. That engages the automatic feed, and the machine will now slowly draw the tips across the surface. Okay, so the shavings that come off here, the EPA considers this hazardous waste. Actually, there's a lid on here while you're cutting. You can close the safety lid over the top, and that directs all the shavings down to a little funnel below, and then into this container. When this fills up, we have to send it in to a recycling plant. Any, any kind of uh, debris that we make here, it all has to go to be recycled. So I like to keep this open when I'm doing a demo, but normally if I was cutting a rotor and I'm going to walk away from this machine, I close it down for safety. I want you guys to see what we're doing now. Once it's cut all the way, you want to shift this back to off. That shuts off the automatic feed. This has a pattern on it right now, all circular pattern, and that tends to cause a squeaking issue. So what we want to do before we take it off here is we're going to take a little bit of emery cloth, and I'm just going to rub it back and forth on here. It's going to give me a non-directional finish, and that should help to avoid any potential squeaking. It only takes a little bit, and then we can shut this down. You guys can probably see the non-directional pattern on there. When you take this off here, just make sure you hang all the components back up for the next person. And then just like you see in some of our other videos, we're going to wipe down, the, at least brush down the machine. Get it a little bit cleaned up for, before we consider ourselves done. This has backwards threads on it, so it doesn't come loose while it's machined. Slide this off, and it's just a reverse process to take this off of here. Just loosen that a little bit. I don't like to put my hands on the rotor because you do have a little bit of oils on your fingers, and I don't want to get those onto the rotor surface. And I'm ready to go back on the car. Just out of the way. You know, actually, I can just sweep it all down into this area, and it's going to get caught down below in that recycling bin. And again, it only takes a second to clean up and keep the equipment nice and neat. And if you drop any tools down in there, you can retrieve them down below. That's it.